Thanks everyone for joining us at the Project Censored Radio Show. We're very glad to welcome to the show Joaquin Yolandad, who's a Swedish actor, writer, and a reluctant activist. Yeah. Uh, Joaquin, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, yeah I said reluctant because I, I really wasn't an activist since in my 40s, you know. It's just because I always try to get out of, not be a part of that because I was into my acting, my own stuff, and but somehow it went too crazy with everything so i can't so i'm a reluctant activist but i'm a happy <laughs> activist well uh i have i have i have heard tell of some uh, of such things uh asada shakur said something similar that uh if, if if things were different she'd be doing pottery or something but yeah. alas here we are in this world and i want to yeah. talk to you about one of those um one of these crazy things that has pushed you to be an activist, namely the DCA agreement that Sweden signed with the U.S. actually last December. On December 5th, the U.S. and Sweden signed what's known as a defense cooperation agreement, a DCA agreement. Yeah. Signed by Secretary of Defense in the U.S., Lloyd Austin, and Swedish Defense Minister Paul Jonsson. Uh, and it, uh, it, basically, yeah. it basically allows for the U.S. to treat Sweden as a vassal state. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about what this DCA agreement actually does. Yeah, they signed it in December last year, but the Swedish parliament uh, uh, made a decision that it was okay just a week ago. And we needed, I think it was three fourths or yeah, three fourth majority of uh, of uh, approving the agreement, and it was uh, approved. Of course, it was just the Green Party and the leftist lefty party. But they're really small, and they're not very green, and they're not very left. So, but yeah, well, what can I say? It's like the end. Sweden is a neutral, <laughs> used to be a neutral country, up in uh, the northern part of Europe, Scandinavia. We've been. Um, for 200 years we've been um, we've been on our own of course since after the world war we have we have had uh, close relations with the west with the nato but um, we have been an autonomous country but from now on from a week ago we lost our motherland you can say because uh, this means we're not a sovereign state anymore this means that U.S. has uh, the right for 17 military bases where they can take their people, they can take their weapons. We're not allowed to ask why or how much and what, and they have their own jurisdiction. They can, uh, yeah, it's like, it's like the capitulation of Japan or Germany or Iraq or... But we've not been in a war. We've not lost the war. We're just so what? Sorry, we're just so. We just hate Russians that much, so we let every, anything happen, you know. And and well, it's a uh, what well, our politicians right now are like, you know, this little elite clique that runs that run the EU and everything and. Oh, they have their, like Paul Jonsson, our defense minister, he's from this um, King's College in London where all the spooks are educated. And it's just, uh, and yeah, it's it's really, really heartbreaking because this is such a big thing. Imagine you've been on your, you've been to this Sweden, it's a famous country for being like the mediator and the the common sense kind of, cool people in the north and i would just as you said a vassal state uh, yeah i want to go on but uh, well did i ask you, ask you yeah so, and, I, and i'm curious too because the swedes the swedish people had no vote on this oh definitely oh yeah sure no and the thing is there was this uh, poll was made uh, asking the Swedish people, I don't know if this was a great poll or not, how many thousands of people, but the question was, do you know what DCA means? And 75% said, no, we have no idea. Hmm. They know about NATO, but NATO, and this is also new, NATO was just three, four months ago. Oh, when was it? I can't, oh, everything's so crazy. But it was not so long ago. But DCA is so much more. It's a bilateral and it's it's American rules in Sweden. The 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 agreement is written in English. For for and and it, 
and it's just that people don't get so that we get, agree on this, but it's not real. And of course, me and my friends, we try to do things. We've done demonstrations and we signed our lists and we, you know, the social media shit. And uh, but um, it's not a, it's not a big interest since Russia, Ukraine, people don't care people. And I think people are. And the media, you were talking, you were asking me about the media. The media in Sweden is terrible, terrible. It's a lot worse than the United States. Because in US, you have media like you, you have, uh, you know, Aaron Maté and Max de Blumenthal and all these people, you know, Kim Iverson, are, you know, great media for people who want to know things. In Sweden, we have. Yeah, we have old people running, you know, blogs, which are great. And we have my little magazine comes out once a month, Fib Kulturfront. Uh, it's an old magazine from the 70s. We all work for free. And uh, but it's like, and we have like nuanced, you know, news about what's happening and and, and that, but uh, but uh, the Swedish BBC, what you can say, SVT, Swedish Television, is like the BBC. They're totally biased, uh, and the big newspaper, the Legacy Media, is all. It's the self censorship is enormous. If you say anything neutral about the Ukraine war, about the the Syrian chemical bombs, or the COVID, or whatever, just another opinion it doesn't mean you have to be right about everything but it's just other opinions are not allowed you don't you know you don't end up in prison but you lose your job and you lose your friends and you lose your status uh, i i could never never see this happen in sweden but when i was like young in the 80s and 90s it was like nuclear free zone it was the biggest thing you would we were it was so important that we are the, you know, link between the superpowers. It's always, you know, your mother is Swedish, you're Swedish. And just in two years, it's just turned around like this. Now, when we needed so much more, this uh, neutrality, this kind of put on the ground, you know, well, and so I'm curious because I th I think you know most of what we talk about on the show is is based in 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 the U S. or around what's happening with the U S. And so I think it if you could share why you think it's important for people to pay attention about this specific thing that's happening with Sweden and why it's important to recognize what the U S. is doing to these NATO member states via uh, these via these agreements why is it important for people outside of sweden to pay attention to this i don't know if it's us doing this to us i think it's us doing it to us and the us it's not like we want the us that's the thing we want we want the us to come and 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 support us against the the terrible russians uh, I mean, it's, but it's but it's based on propaganda. It's based on lies. It's based on idiocracy, technocracy. It's based on you know the the, uh, the arms dealers and all that. But why why do you? Well, because Sweden has this reputation of being a, a, a serious country, and and it's important to know that we're not. We're just a uh, a comparison, I don't know, the Puerto Rico of Scandinavia, I don't know. It's we're just nothing. We just sold out our souls. Sold out our souls. We just sold out everything. It's um and to 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 a declining empire. <laughs> it's not even smart if it would be like, okay, we're safer now with the US, but we're definitely not. It's just crazy. Uh, but why should other people know about this? Um, I don't know. Feel pity for us? Is it... <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? Well, I, I, so the reason that I think it's important to bring it up is because yeah. I think it's important to recognize what the U.S. is doing. And I agree that Sweden did it to itself. I mean, uh, Sweden could have said no. 
But yeah. this ties Europe and the U.S. together in a, a declining empire that will have ramifications for everybody involved. And of course, as, as Asia and China and Russia and India and like the BRICS nations in general yeah. continue to rise, this will have a negative impact on everybody. And now that Sweden has tied itself to the Titanic um, as it sinks, this has, again, ramifications for everybody involved, economically, politically, yeah. you know, nuclear war. Yeah. <laughs> there are, there yeah, are but, but there But are people don't think about that. People don't think it's going to be a nuclear war. No way, no way, no way. Now, I talked to this guy that he, or he's into finance and stuff. And he says, this is great because... It's, it's money. It's the Wallenberg family. It's super big in Sweden. It's our, I don't know, Rothschilds or whatever. They own the weapon industry. They make the Jas Grip and the, our fighter jets. And they make, uh, wow, they're going to make so much money. And the stocks are going woo, way up. And, and all the infrastructure you will need for, for all these American troops. And you have to, you know, the rail, all railroads in inland Sweden, just, you know, tourist railroads now, summertime. Probably they're going to make them, you know, bigger. They're going to have like tanks on them or what have you. So it's a lot of infrastructure and it's like, it's good for business. It's good for business. Yeah, that's it, I think. Some People business. don't, yeah, it is, but it's so just what... so short-sighted. So what is what is going on? I mean, I know that you said that you've been doing some work with your um, with your fellow activists. What is the feeling on the ground with people, I mean, seventy five percent didn't know what DCA meant. Yeah. Do they? Do they know now? I mean, is there any kind of? No, no, they don't. They don't. They will know that day when you know suddenly there are a lot of Americans <laughs> in our streets and uh, and the uh, and the people who have their homes close to the bases because in this uh, agreement you can. The border you can uh, make the borders bigger because you need you know, safe space for the base. I don't know, but people might have to move, and uh, farms have to you know put down their business, and uh, they they will know. But these times are so people are so I don't know unconnected to life uh, and uh, are following the. Uh, the legacy media, the, the society, because in Sweden we have this great, great tradition of following the state. I think it's few countries on earth that have been so, have trusted the state so much as Sweden. And that's still with us because we, because our state is good. It's Olof Palme. It's the, it's a, the mediator, but th that reputation is still with us. And, uh, but yeah, we're gonna, it's gonna be a lot of trouble, of course. Uh, but I think lots, most people, you know, think it's worth the price because Russia is so bad. They can come any day now. They can take Gotland, our little island in the Baltic Sea. And, and, uh, it's just, it's all about, yeah, it's the fear mongering. And it's, and our our news in Sweden, our legacy news, we have great, we used to have great journalists in Sweden, but they don't dare to to speak up their minds. They, they are following the news from the Guardian, from the New York Times, from the CNN, from the MSNBC. It's all Trump is bad, Trump is bad, Trump is crazy, crazy. Everything's like black and white. Biden is good, he's not that old. It's uh, fake news that he's like rumbling about and don't know where to go and blah, blah, blah. It's, you know, <sighs> we, we've gotten so Americanized. <laughs> it's, it's so terrible. And so I'm in Georgia now, Georgia, Asia or Georgia, East Europe or whatever, Caucasus. It's so great to be in a country where, well, they are they have their their political issues and stuff, but they are like they are Georgians, you know. I don't feel we're not Swedish anymore. It's, well, and that's uh, the problem. The only people who claim who are really proud to be Swedish, it seems, are the people on the far right. Yeah. Are interestingly enough the ones who are also 
uh the most eager to lick the boots of the u.s so it's like yeah. but i i thought I you know, were swedish <laughs> i know that was so crazy for me too that the sweden democrats it's our le pen party in sweden they're like 20 percent. they have like 20 percent, and they used to be they come from the nazi movement but that was like yeah in the 90s now they are you know they have their cheap suits and they look good and stuff they have their you know reich hitler hairdo yeah the hairdo. but anyways yeah but they're kind of they are kind of melting into the 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 general idea about things, and they used to be really nationalists and and against NATO, against EU, and uh, but they are totally for it now. But they got bought from the from the um, yeah from the industry the, from uh, <sighs> to be a serious party. You have to you have to make s- certain uh, agreements with the. You know the industries. I don't know the right word for it, but they 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 are, you know, they they just left their nationalistic. Now it's only the only thing they have is against Muslims. You know, it's the Muslim uh, Muslims and Russia and pro Israel. It's like anti Russia, anti Palestine, and uh, anti uh, you know Muslims. That's it. And well, I mean, it's the same thing. Them out that- and everything's well. Trump. Uh, I mean, Trump said that he didn't want to be to 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 be NATO. He he wanted to end wars. He wanted you know America first. And then of course he's in office yeah. and he doesn't do any of that. He promotes yeah. wars. He promotes the death squads. And so it's a very common theme that these right wing extremists say that they want everything to be on on the inside and they want to focus all of their work domestically but then they don't i mean if the sweden democrats really cared that much wouldn't they make sure that the elderly in sweden aren't you know freezing to death in the winter time yeah. or that's real like, politics yeah it's not so about it's... real politics anymore it's just about ideas and uh, you know uh, feelings uh, i think it's it's like this war of cultures isn't it it's like uh, we are western people we're like the americans and the french and italians and maybe the greeks they're a little bit in between but we're it's it's, it's this we and the and the, and the chinese and the russians and the indians and the iranians and the arabs and the i don't know rest of the world is uh, we can't trust them uh, yeah, i think i God damn it! How can I say why? How how do I know why the Sweden Democrats change side? But it's it's to it's to get more votes. It's, it's just to feel where where the wind you know blows. And uh, but uh, I say to my friends, I think if they would been smart, they would have taken this really nationalist agenda and said no to NATO and no to the U.S. I think that would be really clever but they don't they didn't do that so wrapping up here Joaquin, i know that it seems uh rather bleak the outlook but um is there any kind of hope also in terms of organizing yeah. and, uh like what is it what does it look like on the ground in sweden um okay it doesn't look good. <laughs> Sorry to say, it's, it's mostly old people, and I'm soon one of those two. Um, well, I don't know. It, it the the good is uh, the good side is the Palestine uh, movement, and and I think what we have to do and the and the climate people. It would be nice. It would be great to 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 have like a real peace. Um, or, peace movement like it was in the like i imagine it was in the 70s maybe to to an anti-nato anti-war anti-dca anti-usa blah 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 as committed as the as the palestine movement and the and the climate movement it something needs to happen before that changes people don't read the news and read books and come to come to a conclusion oh but no, no, it's you know it's 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 this thing that happened 7th of october and it's all the years and years and years of the climate change uh, warnings that make people oh but okay it's the ukraine war but it's like and there's millions i don't know hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people have died and uh, but it's uh, the there is such 
in, in Sweden and in most countries in the West, uh, it's the, the Russians are the bad guys and the Ukrainians are the good guys. And it's, you cannot get a, uh, you cannot get, even the peace people are like pro-war. Even the the Green Party in Sweden and the left party and the anti-imperialists are, yeah, let's give them guns to Ukraine. Let's, uh, something, uh, something, uh, something terrible has to happen before we, before it changes, I guess. I don't know what, but I guess it's in the time where, where things are as bleak as you can imagine. That's the time when something flicks and, and change will come, I guess. Uh, that That's my hopeful, that's my wish. <laughs> <laughs> well and and well some hope is to for people to to in, physically interact with each other i have this project together with my friends called the dissident club in stockholm and we have uh, what do you call it, live shows in a the theater where we invite very interesting people who have other points of view who so are real peace talkers like Claire Daly, the Irish parliamentarian, Glenn Deeson, Ula Tunander, they talk the truth about Ukraine and Nord Stream. And, uh, and, and, and uh, we have people talking about uh, the Sahel, what's happening in Africa, the, the neocolonization and how Burkina Faso and those countries are breaking free again, at last you can say. so. And, and there's some young people actually coming to these gatherings and that's, uh, and that's how I, I think to change the the the, the tide or, or the the wave is you have to get physical again. <laughs> you have to meet and and you have to get away from the, the social web, social media and internet and, and, and uh, when it's possible to really meet people and see that you we're not so few that we think we are, but uh, to go demonstrating and stuff uh, uh, for uh, for peace for uh, doesn't today I can't see that in in Sweden we're just too few but um, I think if we, if we if we can I hope the dissident club will will grow and and maybe become like a social media thing <laughs> no, but then we can make videos and make more pods and and uh, it, it's a uh, and also I also think that it's important for the peace project that people from different um, ideologies, socialists and anarchists and conservatives and liberals can meet together because it's like very close to the end of the world right now. So and then we can agree on disagreeing on other stuff like economics and, and uh, I don't know about uh, men and women and, and families and what is good and what is bad and stuff. But uh, so, yeah, I have some hope.